So we'll post this letter over here a little later. We'll be adding it to the picture. Right there. Yes. And it's interesting because uh, I understand that you, Francis, have been in contact with Jimmy Suclis through email, right? That's really cool. So, Francis, you grew up in the country there in Zambia, and Jimmy Suclis shows up a new face there. And, uh, yeah. So you grew up with your father. Okay. Come on. So just recently we read a letter from Jimmy Suclis here, so afterwards we post it and we can read. It, it's interesting, Francis knows the sign names of the communities here, so um, you can be um, happy now because I will stop finger spelling all the and we'll have some sign names. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good morning again. Some information. Uh, you remember last week, because we ran out of time, we went as a group to the land hall. I saved two verses that we've not yet touched right there. So if you've not yet read them from last week, we'll read them this week. And secondly, we're going to start opening up Acts chapter 10. I don't know if today we'll have time, but if we have time, we'll start and progress through chapter 10. Our study up until now in the worship time at uh, 9.30, we're studying about the joyful church in the book of Acts. And many times you see the word rejoice or joy in there. It's put down, it doesn't matter if the church is experiencing and facing persecution that's terrible, there's joy and rejoicing. It doesn't matter if it's growing fast, 5,000 people are being added, or if there's a small one person, soul trusting the Lord, there's rejoicing and joy. And that we need to copy here to have rejoicing and joy. Okay. Well, we should start with a song just to worship the Lord. And we're going to start with a song. You have your book? Yeah. Okay, very good. It's 295. You can look that up for a minute. I wasn't quite yet finished. Um, this Tuesday, we do have our study over at the Senior Citizen Center over there at Fog. And uh, second, this Thursday, important to remember, Thursday night, about time 7 o'clock, after the Indian School there is finished and they've broken down and leave, where you've invited students from Maloney College and other people to come gather together for a summertime pizza free. Uh, not charge one dollar, not charge one cent, nothing, it is free. So tap your people, tell them to come to the church, we're going to provide that pizza night. We also have a short movie that we're going to show in about 20 minutes, and we'll project it up here, uh, related with the gospel. We have one person told me they cannot enter the church, it's forbidden because they're from uh, Hindu background. I told them we're not going to force you to enter the church, you can come. We will fellowship outside also. It is warm enough this time. So we'll see. Yesterday was a little bit cold, right? Uh, it's cooling off here. So lastly, remember our missionary meeting starts on Saturday, June 14th. It'll be an evening time start here. We'll have more information for you. Our missionary will arrive this Friday. And so we're happy to arrive early. And uh, then we'll go ahead Sunday, continue. One special thing with your bulletins, when you receive your bulletins, notice and pay attention. Sunday on June 15th, we'll be here in the morning, but the evening will be canceled here because we're going as a group to San Jose. The church there will have our meeting there. So morning will be here, but evening will not be here. Okay, June 15th. And the 16th, last day of the missionary meeting, we'll be going for a group event here locally. Which area exactly, we don't know, but we're planning something we're going to discuss with the missionary year from Portugal, let's see, saying Portugal, 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 and the other uh, missionary is going to West Virginia State here in America. We're going to ask him, what have you seen in California up until now? Uh, our visitor here, um, Carolyn, 
She told me she's seen all oh, California, different, different places. Wow, I mean, trust. The, so some people, they don't want to see the same things again and again, so we'll show them something new, okay? So. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead now and sing. You can put the B now. Thank you. <clears throat> and it's 295. You find your place there, and we'll stand together. We're doing copy signs, so if you're new here, just copy me. If I make a mistake, you go ahead and just follow me, okay? But we'll try to make it clear for you. But the name of the song is He Leaves Me. students here, we thank you for coming to visit today, and just to inform you that if you need me to turn my voice off because your teacher requires that, that is fine. Yeah, Richard's happy about that, but you're not a student. Sorry, you're a member here. <laughs> not for credit class today, sorry. You can audit. But if you're serious, if you need me to turn voice off, we can, and then we just have to tap one of our voice interpreters. But uh, at the same time you've seen, we do have triplet babies that mommy there is caring with. And so that has been a change for our church and also a change for our, our family here. And uh, yeah, all girls, that's right. Three girls in the future. <laughs> So we do thank you as visitors for coming. If you see a sign and you don't catch it, you don't know, you can ask me, just raise your hand, or after church, just put it down on a piece of paper and approach me and ask. We're very comfortable doing that. So thank you for you too is coming. Zoe, you're right. Thank you for coming. And Amy, thank you also. Both in the same class. I understand? Very good. And we have two visitors that I'm not yet going to introduce formally, but just give you a little bit of a hint. We do have a father and a daughter here. 
And a little bit later today, we're going to give opportunity for some introduction in a Sunday school class. So our normal Sunday school class is not going to be happening because we do have this special uh, visitor that is here considering about coming for an internship. And we'll see how the Lord leads. He leadeth me. Okay. Right? Amen. Okay. Go ahead, Sam. Well, you remember last week, we went as a group up to Vallejo, right? So Ken's nodding, that's right. We went up there, why? Because we were going to see, we were going to observe an ordination. We are going to see someone established as a new pastor there. Up until now, I think seven years, Brad Ketterling has been serving the Lord there faithfully in Vallejo as a deaf pastor there. And now he is being replaced. So Brad Ketterling will leave and go to Washington State. I think next month he'll be setting up a church very soon. And the new pastor who's taking up, we named, we met last week, is Mark. And we're happy to see him. But why do we do that? Last week we discussed about why do we baptize people. And we showed you some verses from the Bible, right? Now why do we ordain or establish a person? You remember last week as they preached, they talked about a transfer of authority from the old pastor here who's stepping down and the new pastor who's taking up. And that transfer of authority is very, very important to have, and the Bible talks about that. So let's see what God's words talks about here. What's happening? Go ahead, one more time. Now, you remember recently I projected Titus chapter 1, verse 5. So let's start in the place of Titus chapter 1, verse 5. T-I-T-U-S, Titus. Oh, in chapter 1, and verse 5. sometimes was messed up. It was not in order. There was confusion in the church. You need someone who is a leader in the church to set in order. We're going to start with singing, and then we're going to go with pray, and then we're going to collect our offering, and there's an order that we follow. Now, it doesn't have to be the same, the same week, week, week. No, we can set the order differently next week, or two weeks, or sometimes we can change it, just sometimes a little bit. But to set in order the things that are lacking in the service of God's work. That includes missionary work. So when we receive a letter, ah, okay, from a missionary in Africa, we read it, we sent the support finished, but we're going to read 
Hmm. Is he following the same idea, setting in order things in Africa? Yes, obviously. He is reaching community up here. He is reaching community up here. Uh, Okay, uh, Katate, okay? Okay, that community. He is reaching the different places because the gospel needs to reach deaf people there and deaf people there. And he's setting an order in the future. It grows a group, it grows a group. Hard to travel, travel. Fine. We will call a new pastor here and set him up and ordain him here. And then he'll proceed because he's ordaining himself. That's the idea. So we support missionaries. We support local church activities that are organized, and we need a leader who is involved in that. So Paul was concerned. We need to set, we need to ordain a new leader here. Secondly, I want you to notice in the verse here, I appointed you in the same way. I mean what? We had Paul here who arrived in the city or the island of Crete. We don't have record about that, but we know it happened that Crete, he visited there, and he told, I set you up. You are the boss for the church here. So we have a generation of people who are set up and ordained. Last week, if you remember, there were three people involved with the ordination service. There were three. Remember, who was first was the man who was here, and he was a little bit bald. His name was Don, right? And he was the boss for Brad Kevin. He oversees a group of different missionaries from different deaf churches. There's one deaf church in Colorado State. Otto is the pastor there. He oversees there. There's a deaf church in the Los Angeles area with blind deaf people there. He oversees the work there. There's a deaf church in Blake. He oversees the work there. The different churches he oversees, he will travel there, check the work. It's all right. It's smooth there. Travel here, check. It's all right. It's smooth here. Travel, check, check, check. Making sure what? The order is being come. Now that first man here, long ago, five years ago, seven years ago, set up Brad Kettling in the church. Same as Paul. And then second now, they called him to show him that Brad Kettling has chosen a new person who will take up and will proceed forward. Now, obviously, they told about last week, they had a vote. The church family agreed with the selection. And that's important too because the church family has the Holy Spirit in individual hearts that is running, and God uses individuals to recognize, ah, that's not a fit with the church. Or, yes, that's a good match with the church. And then we go ahead and we proceed with the ordination. So these two things I want you to notice. One, related with we need to set order, and secondly, we need to see that there is a, a generation of giving that order. My hope, my dream here with the Deaf Baptist Church is that I don't stay up until I'm so old, I can't walk here and enter church. Same as Richard, okay. <laughs> but my hope and my dream is that someone will see the vision and say, oh, I can take up the ministry. We have Ebro there. He's studying in Bible college, right? He's caught the vision. And if God gives him citizenship here in America, that'll be fine. He can take up the ministry here and continue. But if God leads him to Africa, fine, then we will ordain and set him to order things in Africa. That's fine, too. God leads where he wants to lead. And that's the key. Go ahead, Sam. One more. Okay. Number two. You remember, there was a second verse that I gave you. It was 1 Timothy. So close to the book of Titus, 1 Timothy, chapter 5, and verse 17. 1 Timothy, chapter 5, and verse 17. One thing I've not yet explained, but if you notice, there's a star right here. A little bit later, I'm going to explain about the word 
elders. Okay, so the sign name we have here is for elders. Uh, for your students that are here today, I'm going to give you some free sign language, okay? C hand is a committee, right? Committee of Congress. Uh, D hand is for deacon. E hand is for elders. Um, a hand is for Atlanta. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, now, they have different group of signs that are related with words that are here, like we, the sign we or us. And so we have deacons, group, that we're we, we're elders, we're group. Maybe Atlanta is because people gather together in that, that state in Atlanta. I don't know the, the history of that sign, but there's, there's a reason why the sign developed that way and the language developed that way and there are rules and so we follow that and we go, oh, that's for free. I can understand now the concept that's there. Okay. Paul here in verse 17 says, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially who labors in the word and in doctrine. Now that verse is important, I think, for a few different reasons. volunteer for preaching. They volunteer for the staff work. Okay? But the Bible here tells two things. First, in, long ago, if you remember, we talked about we studied in chapter 6 of Acts. We had a problem in the church that appeared. And the problem was what? The widow women were lacking food. There was not enough sharing in the church. People were selfish and some people had a lot of food and some people didn't have enough. So now, the people who were responsible for preaching and praying in the church were called apostles. They were the followers of Jesus Christ. So we know who the name was Peter, okay? The man who was the rock, Peter, okay? He, he called a group and he gathered together and he discussed. It's not appropriate for us to steal time from studying God's word and to steal time from praying. We need to look among the people who are qualified deacons. People who are able to oversee the table here and make sure that the widow woman don't run out of food to provide, okay? So they looked and they looked and they found seven qualified men among 5,000 people. This is a big church. And these seven men, they said, your appointed job, your duty is to go ahead and oversee the money required to buy the food, to oversee the tables as they're set up, the cooking, we don't want people sick going home because it wasn't cooked good. The, the, the requirement, the list, and they said, this is your responsibility, your ministry. It's important because if you do not minister to the widow people, what happens is gossip outside the world. People slander the church. Jesus Christ's name is not good. It's no good. Now, the people here who were apostles, they said, no, we can't steal our time. We have to study God's word. It's important. It's precious. God's word. We must focus. Because God called us to preach God's word. We must pray because if we don't pray enough, then we're going to be lacking of preaching enough also. Our lives are going to break down. We're not going to be spiritual men. The same idea is here. This group here, how do they support themselves? They go and they work, work, work all day, 24, or 24 hours a day and seven days a week. They will? No. The church is going to take money and they're going to pay them because they study God's word. They're going to pay them because they're prayer men, they're spiritual men. These deacons over here who are responsible are going to help and support and assist the group over here. So the first point today, there's set up a tradition in the church here that we need to be paying for the people who minister the word of God. Paul said, I want you to evaluate Evaluate. See, you're so-so as a pastor. You're good. You study a lot. You're not lazy. <laughs> One story I want to give you. One time, there was a pastor in Illinois State, not here in California, he gave out Illinois State, who decided God had called him to go to another missionary field. 
Where? To the Indians in Arizona. Okay, so if you know, in the southeast, near Texas, there's a group of Indians that have this big land that the government gave them. Okay, it's desert there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a reservation, that's right. So you know that that place is reserved there for the Indian group, okay? It's really their own country name. It's not Arizona related, it's not American, it's their own country name related with the Indian tribe there. This man from Illinois decided, God's called me to bring my family, and he had one other family in the church volunteer together, so two team, and they went to Arizona, they set up ministry among now, many of the Indians there are alcoholics. Um, they're not married, orientate, various things. Problem, problem, problems there. Worse than normal because the government pays them a little bit of money. They don't work. They don't go to school. Okay, so nothing. Okay, so just sit, get drunk, have a woman. Okay, that kind of thing was happening. Waste of a life, right. And people there live an average below like 30 years because fights and Death, death and things happen. Okay. Anyway, now, the man he moved and he stayed for two years. But he set up an assistant pastor there who was in a church. But one year later, he recognized something was wrong because people in the church were contacting him to Arizona. Old pastor, there's a problem that's shown up in the church. What? Pastor, he analyzed, he, he evaluated, he saw that new pastor, the assistant pastor, was not motivated to study God's word. He would go golfing four days. And he would be open in the office one day. So the people were used 12 years up to now. Our pastor's there, available in the office, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, studying God's Word. We can go there and discuss about issues in our life. They arrive at the office, it's closed. We can golf today. Okay, fine, tomorrow it's closed again. Tomorrow it's closed again. What's up with that? So the pastor, he evaluated, he observed, he said, you're taking advantage of church. I'm sorry, I can't allow that. So he resigned from the missionary work, and he moved back home to Illinois State. And the church fired the assistant pastor there and told him, we're sorry, you can't continue golf playing all day, four days. It's not appropriate behavior. You are not worthy of being paid for that ministry. You're not worthy of the double honor of receiving study time and prayer time together because you just vacation time. Later, it's interesting because characters does not change. That assistant pastor moved to California. And I heard his name and I was shocked. I said, oh, wow, I hope he's not the same here in California. And one year, two years, the same situation showed up in the church there. The church before, 250 people. 100 people because every day, going, golf, 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 golf. Often the church recognized and replacing with a new pastor. Now that church is growing again. They were out of 180 people. But understand, it is not good if you don't have someone to oversee the ministry. Remember the tree. We have down here the bald man. And he, he flies and he visits the church in LA. He checks. Are you playing too much golf? <laughs> okay. I'm teasing a little bit, but it's serious also because I want you to understand God gives men a burden to preach God's word and they can take advantage of people. They cannot steal the money and just play golf all day. It's not appropriate. The second man we talked about was Brad Kettling, the pastor there. And he's overseeing this new pastor. And he sees him. He said, I think I can leave. I'm going to trust you with the ministry. We'll check sometimes, make sure it's running smoothly. But this third man, he's responsible now. I'm going to take up the responsibility. I understand I must earn the right to have the double honor. I must work for studying God's word. I must work in prayer. I must sweat. Same as people who work a job. Evaluation of the ministry. Both things about the pay and respect that be earned here. In chapter 5, verse 17, I want to emphasize one more thing about the word double honor. Okay? Now, some people will argue about double honor means double pay, okay? So, an engineer here earns $50,000 a year, okay, so we'll pay the pastor $100,000 a year, right, concept? No. Not necessary, okay? I like the idea, but it's the wrong concept, okay? <laughs> One person told me double honor means now when my wife brings me a plate with uh, a donut, then the deacon brings me a second plate with this other donut. Okay, so I have double 
Honor, right? <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> we have to be careful, okay? I'll be full, I'll be this big pastor, right? So it doesn't mean that. It means what? Double honor. What are we talking about? There's a blessing, okay, and who is the blessing from? From her. God himself is keeping and watching and counting, and so there's going to be an honor there, yes, but also where is the honor? In heaven. Yeah, in heaven, that's with God, he's keeping that count, okay, but where? There's a second honor that we talk about. Well, the crowns are in heaven also, okay, I can't receive now. Okay. The church, that's right, honors the pastor, that's right. So there's a first honor here on earth that is given, and that honor is pay, and, and one plate of donut is fine, or half a donut if I need to decrease, okay? <laughs> but there's a second honor in the future related with heaven, because God is watching, the people are watching, and God is seeing, and it's matching and agreeing with you. If the Holy Spirit is showing me something is wrong, it means what? He's showing you something is wrong too, right? So when the pastor is convicted, I should not go tomorrow, two days, for playing golf so much. Are you maybe also being convicted? I see something's wrong in the church also, right? Because the Holy Spirit is the same among all. So God himself is counting, and the people here on earth are also. We're counting, and that's what we're talking about with the God. And we're open to discuss that later, but I just want to give you the idea. Please don't think I'm requiring you double pay now, okay? <laughs> Engineers, that, that's too much, okay? We're not talking about double plates of donuts, okay? No, no. We're talking about God himself is double giving that second honor there, okay? Go ahead, Sam. Now, we're not going to read chapter 13, okay? So put it down if you want to go home and study chapter 13 in Acts here. But the next verse, after our tithes and offering, is going to be in Acts chapter 21, verse 18. Right here, okay? So just please open and then hold it there because we're going to call an usher to come for our tithes and our offerings to the Lord.
talks about that idea, that concept of being kind of kicked out or sent from the church because they were separated from the work of the gospel. So three stayed in the church and two went out and they traveled. And then they came back to the church. Why? Because of the authority to report to the church. What happened over here? People were saved. Same as the missionary today. Letter. Why? Because of accountability. Report to the authority of the church. We pay the money because we know God is working there, but at the same time we see, show me, what happened? Oh, four people, men, accepted Jesus Christ. It's wonderful. And we praise the Lord together. We pray that God will grow those four men and protect their minds and pray that God's heart will be growing inside them and become the same as Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. Not only pay money, but pray for the people there. Now, what happened? Paul was sent from the church, but he receives counsel from another church in the city of Jerusalem. This is interesting because imagine we have a church. My uh, youth group meets up in Panol named Richmond there. And they have a sister church in San Jose called Sunrise Valley Baptist Church. And when they set up a new pastor just recently, they sent letters to different churches. And they called the church San Jose. They said, would you come and see and oversee who is the new pastor? Read his doctrine. Check who is here. We want your feedback. We want your opinion about who we're going to set up for the church. So this church far away, about 60, 70 miles, sends a pastor and sends a deacon. And those two, they arrive at the meeting. And there's another church over here and a church over here and a church over there. All the same in their doctrine, same in their practice. And they gather together and they interview who is the new pastor here. They say, who are you? What do you believe? Will you lead the church the same as before or will you lead the church in a new way? What's going to happen? And this is very, very important here that when a church needs counsel or counsel, we go to who? The world. Ooh. We pay Google, help us. Good idea. We pay uh, Costco, right? They have good food. <laughs> I have a membership card, right? No, we don't pay them for counsel. No, we call for free counsel from biblical churches that are local. In chapter 21, verse 18, it talks about that. It says, the day afterwards, Paul went up to us, to the man whose name was James, and all the elders <coughs> were there. Who was James? He was an apostle, that's right. And he was the pastor for the church in Jerusalem up until he was beheaded. Okay. After that, they replaced him with a new pastor because he couldn't continue his ministry without a head. Okay. But we, we see now that he had this idea that Paul was concerned about what was the view of the church in Jerusalem here, the same as the church setting. They both had authority. There's a biblical doctrine here that I want to emphasize. Individual church, individual church, both have an equal authority. And we respect that. Brad Kettling's church up in Vallejo, they have their right to call a new pastor. But our church, why do we go up as a group and watch? Because we want to see the same doctrine continue. We want to encourage that pastor, look, we are paying attention to you. We're praying for you, yes. We love you, yes, but we're watching. And we expect you to continue with the same doctrine that Brad Ketterling has here in the church. This is important. There's a church in Sacramento area up there. The old pastor was the same as Brad Ketterling. The old pastor was the same as us here. The new pastor I contacted, I said, hello, who are you? Tell me, you're a new pastor. He sent me an email with an attachment. He told me, we've changed the doctrine yesterday. New pastor. I said, wow, I can't fellowship you. I'm sorry. I can't continue a relationship with your church. I'm sorry. No, no, this is two, three years ago it happened. Okay? But an example, this is local California State. Their church decided without calling different churches to look, new pastor, independent. We decide we want that pastor. But new pastor arrives vote passes, new pastor says, I'm sorry, we're not going to continue constantly changing. The doctrine changes in one moment, finished, the church, some people left, yes, 
Some people stayed, yes. Some people were confused and didn't know what to think. Old doctrine is right, new doctrine is right. I don't know, okay? But you see, they did not call for counselors, people to look over, to evaluate. And it's important that you and I, when I become very old and my, my weak mind starts to break down, okay? Don't depend on the pastor, but call people. Sunrise Valley Baptist Church over there. Say, call, call. We have a new pastor we're thinking about, but we want to check, make sure he matches with the proper doctrine. You interview, help us, okay? Call for counselors, okay? Because the Bible talks about this here. Why do we go? Because God's word shows the example here. Go ahead. <coughs> One more time. Okay, good. Okay, back up now. Right here. Now, remember, verse 18, you recently read in chapter 21. Back up to chapter 20 and read verse 17. So back up one chapter, chapter 20 and verse 17. My boss is not bald, but his name is Bob, okay? Brad Ketterling, his boss is through BMW, Biblical Ministry World, their missionary group, okay? You consider about, you go with El Salvador future, you apply with maybe ABWE, because they are involved with El Salvador ministry there. That's A for American, B for Baptist, W for World, E for Evangelist, okay? So that woman that's coming in two weeks here, she has worked in Colombia, you know, South America, Colombia, under that board. And now she's transferring to Portugal, uh, near to Spain. So, okay. But you can consider about that God uses different people to reach different areas. Okay. Now, with here, we talk about defending first my own ministry and second extending my ministry to other places okay we cannot read the full section but I want to just give you some okay starting in verse 17 it tells and from the city of M I L E T S he sent to another city called E P H Ephesus and he called the elders related with the church in what Paul is over here in the city called Miletus. And he sends a letter, he sends a person who walks over here to the city over here in Ephesus. And he says, call, you have an elder your church, you have an elder your church, you have an elder your church, you three, come, come, because we have a meeting over here. So they lead to the meeting, the letters are sent, people come to this meeting now. Now, Paul himself first starts with defending, I'm here. Up until now, and I'm condensing, if you remember verse 18 through, just read, 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 you see. I, here, I'm humble serving the Lord. I'm suffering because people persecute me without enough pay. He various defends his ministry, my own first. Paul, huh? finish, he tells now, who I'm here, look at me and pay attention because I need to start explaining with you in verse 28. Pay attention, care for the people here in your church. I want you to pay attention because I'm going to send you back there and back there and back there who are the pastors, the elders. And you are responsible for the group over here and you are responsible for the group over here. Care for them because God is watching you. And he explains and explains and he extends the ministry. 
And if you remember last week, first, Dom, he preached and he warned the new pastor about the devil sometimes sneaks in and destroys people's families and destroys ministries. And the second, Pastor Brad Kettling, he told about he was really surprised. God called you to replace me. I didn't know you, but God is working and leading. Don't forget that. If God leads you, you stay here. Don't get to think, oh, okay, I'm bored. I'm transfer other place. No, I'm leaving you with the responsibility now. And the third man, the new pastor, he stood up at the end. And he remembered in the book of Joshua, remember? He told, remember Moses? He's resigning. He's the old man who's led Israel up now. And he's resigning. And this new <coughs> young man, and he's awkward. He says, I have to trust the Lord. Yes, because the Lord will give me the power. And so we see these three men who understand that God is transferring the authority to a new pastor, to a new uh, person who's going to take up that responsibility. Now today, I'm going to close. I'm going to give you about five minutes. Go to the bathroom, get some more coffee, whatever you need. And then we'll come back here. We're going to continue a little bit different Sunday school class today. But it's very, very important. I want you to come back here together. I want to end with idea. Part of my reason that we went up there as a group, I want you to learn the process. When I arrived here, it was not good. We had six deaf people in the church in 2002. And I arrived here with these six members and these two children. Richard was there. He witnessed that. Ken was there. He witnessed that. Joni's not here today, but she witnessed that. That small group was without a pastor for two years, looking and waiting and going down and going down. That is not the appropriate way to replace a pastor. What you saw last week up in there in Vallejo is the right way because God led me up here to replace. And the old pastor, he proved, he said, that's good. And the new pastor looked, he said, I accept. Same with Moses. He transferred the responsibility to who? To Joshua, right? And Joshua said, I accept. Big. Wow, it's scary, yes, but I understand God is with me, right? That is the appropriate way we should transfer. When I become older, or maybe I get sick and I have cancer or something happens and hits, that's fine. We trust the Lord. But God will put person here and we will recognize as a church family, you, the Holy Spirit will see, that's the person who's going to replace. And then we can go ahead and we can follow the same as Paul was there. And we can call the churches to gather together and to witness and that replacement can happen. Now, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I want to train you. I want you to be ready to see the right way and not to follow the same idea of before. Because when a person just gets frustrated and leaves, it's not good because the church is without a shepherd, a leader. And God has appointed a person here to lead the church for a first time. Thank you. Let's close with prayer. And we'll go ahead with about a five minute break. And then we'll, we'll go ahead with a special Sunday school class today. I, I think you're going to enjoy it today. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to gather together to worship you first in this song. We worship you second in our tithes and our offerings. Thirdly, to worship you in the Word of God and to see your Word, how it applies in our hearts and how that we can see, wow, the example is set in the Old Testament. Help us, Lord, now as we understand your Word to apply it. In Jesus' name. Amen.
So um, uh, why don't we start with Tracy, and then I'll come back the next row. So can you stand and tell people who you are? Okay. Yeah. Can you just stand and turn around. Tell people who your name, what you work, where you live. Just short. Okay. I'm I'm
have internships mm -hmm. here. I mean, there's lots of Christian schools. What mm -hmm. Christian schools and programs? What makes specific to the deaf? Um, that would be a question better for my daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, are you ready to come? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. now we'll answer it. Yeah. Oh, Richard. Sorry. Financial secretary as well as treasurer, or just treasurer? Just the treasurer. Yeah, he does treasure. Do you use a computer? Save <laughs> earnings, giving. Yeah, we definitely. A separate person is the financial secretary. And she uses one program to record the, the giving, and then I use another program for the, 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 the counting, the paying of the bills. Yeah, he said he doesn't. Some of his on paper and some of Yeah, could be quick book. We do quick book. Yeah, we actually use Peach Tree. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so you come up and then you can answer first with Todd and then you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Why the deaf tree? summarizing that she's saying a motorcycle accident happened she witnessed when she was eight years old. Her mother explained that when a motorcyclist died, um, he would go to hell if he didn't know Jesus. And so that's what started to understand what her sin. And she wanted forgiveness. Forgive goes forward. For other the other way. Yeah. <laughs>
have, uh, have you met deaf people locally? Like in New York or um, other states? Yes. High school person. Okay. This one. Not a lot of deaf people though.
no knows us more than house. And they know me more than house. And she they gave me asked me questions but I came to explain. And I go to see my pastor and I said, Pastor, I want to go to go I mean go to tell the people that people need that Jesus Christ. I I ask I can I tell him and he told me easy because do you need to prepare because God wants to tell you how you learn. Okay, Pastor. And before the pastor prepared in our church for missionaries. And um, in the uh, he preached and in in my heart I I I want to go up to tell the people. I want to go. And I tell for Jamalita. Call me. The Holy Spirit called me, called me, and uh, I accept to go with me. As missing in Mexico, they say no, and yeah, missing. And here's other, other, other things. Um, but always, always, Open the door, please, somebody live here. Do you need the Lord Jesus? Please receive the Lord Jesus in your heart. I come to speak English, but I tell the people, American people, do you need Jesus Christ? Only, no. I go to, I, I go to receive other countries. I was in Washington, I was in, in uh, Hawaii, and many people, Talk to Spanish, but I am with a American people, and I came to tell you, love, Jesus love, Jesus want to give you eternal life. Please receive the Lord Jesus in your heart because He want to give it, give to you the eternal life. Thirty-five years, I received the Lord Jesus, and I I am very happy, and now I'm very happy here. Please pray for me because I like to speak to you. My, my grandma is a pastor, pastor is a husband of my, my, my dog. He is my pastor too. As I have said, he was my pastor. He is my pastor. But I don't know. I want to stay here. It's my sentiment. I don't know what God tell me for the, the next time. Okay, Great. thank you so much. And we'll continue to pray. We know that the church over there has been struggling and they want to set up a new ministry and we're praying for their group to succeed with Pastor Bob and, and Pastor Dudding is planning to come here in July to replace me for two weeks, okay? so. Uh, so you can look forward, put it down in your schedule, he's going to come. And he is better than me because first he knows sign language, but second he knows Spanish language. So he can go ahead and he can speak directly to her heart in the Spanish language as well. Right? Can you recommend it? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm here, I'm Todd. My last name is B O U M A Balma. And I've worked here as a deacon in the church uh, about seven years now. Seven years. Oh, remember? Maybe ten years now. Yeah. I enjoy the church here. Make sure all things are running smoothly within the church. Make sure the constitution fits and make sure all projects are going, uh, if we have to discipline, we have to make sure we're matching with the Holy Spirit, okay? And there's my wife over here. Hi, my name is Diana, and my last name is also Bauma, 
We were married here July or June, excuse me, 24, and about seven years ago we got married here in the church. And I um, prayed when I was a child, about the age of 13, um, to get saved. And I know there's many false idols because my mother's a Buddhist, but I um, saw that God was seeking me, and, and my sister became a Christian, and she showed me the truth and false things about the idols that my mother was following. And so my sister gave me things to read and explain to me about false idols and um, many different religions there. And so I got the gospel also in school uh, and how that Jesus died on the cross for me. And so I accepted that salvation uh, and I was saved. And I'm so thankful to the Lord for that. And I come to church here uh, a little bit longer. Uh, I found this was right for Baptist doctrine for me to be here. And there's also many charismatic churches, you know, the deaf church, but I found the Baptist church here. I met my husband here and stayed. And we're here. We don't have any children yet. Okay. But before they sit, the two, okay? Um, you, oh, it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, we had this single man here. And we had this single woman who came to visit the church. And they were very, very private. They did not publicly show romance, nothing, okay? But I noticed one time they set up a table after church and they set up a, a game. I think it was a word game like um, Scrabble or something after church. I thought, that's, that's interesting. That's good fellowship, a game after church. Before people sometimes chess after church. But this is more of a chatting game, you know, words and things. And then later, I was traveling to New York State and I was preaching and in church, it was time about 11 o'clock, I felt my, my phone. <laughs> Hello, it's Todd. Um, you uh, scheduled wedding for June 24th. I said, wedding for June 24th? I said, wait, hold for a moment, we can counsel first. And then we can go ahead and proceed. So I really am happy for those two because God led them to meet here and God is leading them to serve. So I'm happy and congratulations for you. Continue faithful with them. He said, I want to give a long testimony of passion making me condensed. So, um, he says, I grew up, um, I was born deaf, no, I was born hearing, and what happened was a bicycle accident hit me in my leg, and uh, so when that happened, I went from hearing, a month and a half later, my hearing went down, I became deaf, and my voice is terrible. Uh, there's different languages in my country, uh, Igbo, Iliran, uh, Nigerian, uh, French, and English. And so these are the languages of my country that hearing people speak. And so I was very confused because I couldn't hear voices anymore. Uh, some words are clear. Uh, so I used my voice off since then. Um, friends led me to find a place where there was a deaf school. And uh, I was about 17 years old before I finally went to school. And then I also was taken to a church, which was a hearing church. They had no interpreter for sign language, so I didn't understand what they were saying. I took the Lord's Supper before God um, changed my heart, so He had mercy on me. He didn't kill me for taking the Lord. I had supper. I didn't understand what I was doing. Uh, but then in 2005, the Holy Spirit started to convict my heart, and so I became born again. And uh, when I was born again, I understood about that. And I accepted Jesus Christ. He, the cross was applied to my heart. And then I wasn't ready to be baptized um, because uh, there were some problems that were bothering me, especially with the Muslims in my country. And uh, so uh, I graduated from high school in 2009. So he's in his 20s now when he graduated from high school. And then uh, I was going to fly to America. My uncle found, they thought I was going to come become a professional soccer player here. And um, anyhow, uh, they gave me my first passport, and, uh, ready to fly. So I got baptized right then in 2009 before I flew to America in Nigeria. And God opened my eyes and I saw here, um, and I came to church here. And one of the first people I met was Todd. And uh, I explained to him about the RGB church in uh, Africa. And then Pastor Mackey was here. And, uh, so I was 
thinking, should I join as a member here of the church or should I stay in 2010? And then God has been preparing and working and calling me uh, to become a missionary. And so uh, I've been training as an usher, training as a deacon, and I soon will graduate from the deacon training. My father died, fortunately. In 2010, I was stuck. I couldn't fly back to Nigeria from the United States. I didn't have the finances to do it, so I just had to trust the Lord. My mother got divorced, I was married with another person. It's not fair. A long time, I haven't seen her in 27 years. And I God will leave me so that I can go and miss my family sometime. Um, I've recently moved to Arizona to go to Bible college, and I'm working to be a pastor evangelist. So thank you for that. He said, I've never met Francis, who is from Africa as well, so I went to Lonnie College. And then when he met me, he was from Zambia. Cool, I was from Nigeria. I'm in the north part of Africa. He's in the south central part there of Africa. We're far apart in Africa. But anyhow, we had this connection. We were both Christians. And um, we went to Lonnie College and we encouraged one another. He's a precious brother in Christ. And, uh, he's a little stubborn sometimes. I keep trying to get him to come to church. Mm -hmm. He can't always come. But uh, we do contact, communicate uh, through the years here. And he's best friend here, Francis. And, and Francis, he is responsible for leading him to come to church here. So we thank you so much for bringing him so God can use him as a servant and hope for his community. Well, that's my favorite. Um, my son is going to Uganda for a two-week mission trip in July. Okay, sign in with us. G hand, like Glenn, okay. on your hand, this is you done. Okay. Yeah. So he's going to July, he's going to fly there for a mission trip. He says, wow. <laughs> he says he's brave. <laughs> right, okay, very good. So this is Jeremiah? Yes. Okay, so Sam, show the picture for a minute. So, he, he would seem to fit the face same as the African trait in Uganda. <laughs> no, he'd be different, right? People would be fascinated, right? Lighter skin there in Africa and American citizen people would be fascinated and that gives opportunity for the gospel because people are curious, right? <laughs> No, no, they live in New York, but their son is going to travel, right? Yeah. Go ahead, Sam, and be again. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, now Abner is here. Good to see you. Thank you. And he loves traveling, so he wants our group to go to L.A., right? So he like, wants, he desires that L.A., so we'll see what God leads in the future. We have a blind deaf center in L.A., so maybe you can go and visit with a blind deaf there and chat that with we'll see, okay? Yes, start basic first, okay? Ken, go. And what I'm doing here like, uh, with, with a visitor, I'm, I'm skipping right now, the members right now. So you see Stan, the member right over here. So you can put that down in mind. So we can later share more. My name is Ken. Wang is my last name, and I want to say hello to you. First time to meet you. I grew up, I was born with cerebral palsy, and uh, there was a sickness in my body, a fever, for a few weeks when I was about 13 months old, and I became deaf because of the infection in my spine, spinal meningitis that was there. I mean, that caused the panic. That's the meningitis. My parents are Buddhists, they're idol worshippers. And then I got saved at the cross of Jesus Christ in 1999. 1999, that's when I got saved. And I was in school, I got a certificate. 2005. Oh, okay, now also he's talking about, he's taking some Bible classes. 
So he's getting certificates of Bible classes, not full Bible degree, but certificates. Uh, Capital Baptist Bible College right now is an online course. Uh, Deaf College they have there. And so uh, they're in Maryland State, and I'm learning to become evangelism class, and I just passed the class, and I'm going to do discipleship. Okay. And you and Mom are in the training this year, starting with And Amir here is our video technology person. Thank you for coming. And uh, Francis, a student from Africa and Zambia. Thank you. you welcome to love and coming. How many years? <laughs> yes. It's a long time you've had a relationship with the church. If you want to share sh short about your testimony salvation, don't pressure, okay? Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, thank you. My name is X I O M A R A Shimara, and my sign name is X by my I. I was born from El Salvador, and, you know, near South America. And I do miss the food there. I miss the culture, the traditions, and I I love that. But anyhow, I grew up Catholic, and. Um, Waited up until it hit me. I got married and I moved here to California. And my husband is also from Mexico. So we have the same Hispanic language. And I read lips, but I also can sign. So I have this language in And ASL, I speak. Um, no, of course, I can't speak really. I can speak lip reading with Spanish. So if you speak Spanish to me on the lips, I can read that. What happened is I met at Loney College a woman whose name was Doris, that's right. Lady Fawn. And uh, I could see the light of Jesus in her eyes. And I asked her, Doris, I said, um, I see something that's hidden. And with my gut feeling, I knew something. And so uh, she wanted to pray for me and, and then uh, I was over at her house and there was another friend of mine who was witnessing with me at the same time trying to win my soul to save me, see me saved. And uh, they wanted me to agree and say yes. And so they made me watch a movie about Christian, about Jesus dying on the cross and raising from the dead. So I watched this. And it was, uh, I can remember growing up seeing things about Jesus every year. It's very different now in El Salvador. Anyhow, both of these two were witnessing with me. And it's kind of funny. I wanted to say yes. My husband said, oh, yes, 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 yes. We believe. Yes. So to accept Jesus Christ. And then there was a step. I feel like something was wrong. Nothing was answered yet to, to that. Not yet really had started my relationship here. So there's a foundation of discussion, feedback, feeding, building the foundation for their uh, related to the religious practice years. After 2006, 2005, yeah. She was very excited and she wanted to be baptized in the church. And I'm, I'm bothered Pastor Mackey over there at the old church in Fremont, remember? I want to be baptized. Really bad. I've been waiting and waiting, and he said, Settle down, settle down. We have to look at you. We have to see and observe who you are. He's been telling me this for very long at that time. And then Kay Cordero came to church. That's right. We're back there together. That's right. And we took pictures together. And I was so excited at God's word, the Lord working my heart, being baptized. Wow. And then it was. Continuing fellowship, and they left the church, and so I'm going to stand here with the Lord, even if my friend leaves the church. I'm still joyful, excited. Uh, I'm buying books on my own, studying, seeing what the meaning is, what does it look like to be a Christian, and I come here uh, with you, fellowship. Really, let me be honest with you, you know, I'm honored that sometimes coming here, yes, I do confess that, uh, because I do work uh, all night long. And it is tough for me to come to church because my body, as I live, I get so sleepy with my life. And 
my body kind of breaks down. Like today, I praise the Lord that I was able to come here. It's vacation for a couple weeks. I'm taking advantage to come to church. And uh, so, for God's glory. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, I come. I want to be able to see the lectures here. And the House of Fog on Tuesday, I'll be there as well. That's good. And one thing, uh, some good news I want to give you. I contacted on the computer on Facebook, you know, someone who said hello. Uh, first of all, because of contact to international people. Um, video relay service I use as witnessing um, people from India, from Japan, uh, from uh, South America, Colombia. And I do pray for the world. Lord, wow, he is, he is wonderful. But I've not yet become a member here. I'm on hold a little bit, and, uh, and God has touched my heart. That's true. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, one explanation. <coughs> Continue to pray for my husband, right? Yeah. Good news about my husband. There's a friend who's been witnessing with my husband. And I think he's almost there, so pray that his soul will there. Not yet. We still trust the Lord for his full timing. And this is important because she desires to be a member, but I told her, settle down and wait because your husband first born again, then your husband will be comfortable, not feel that we're stealing your wife from the family. We really want together your husband with wife together, okay? She has five friends that she works with in El Salvador of Spanish, and I try to help them understand because they're very dry spiritually, and I teach them. And that's through the video phone, right? Yes. Skype. I'm sorry. That's good. Wonderful testimony. Praise the Lord how it works. Richard, next. Students who are right handed or left handed. Would you like a shot? It's up to you. I asked if she'd like to, so I'm giving her an opportunity. I've turned my voice off for you, but uh, Pastor Mackey is telling you my name is Richard. Peterson is my last name. Please forgive me, please forgive me. That's why I do R on the forgive hand here. You can see how he signs it. And he says, not like research me, but just forgive me, okay? So I started learning sign language when I was age 27. That was a long time ago. I was in school as a hard of hearing boy. I didn't have any sign language teaching. And so I had to read lips and they showed me how to change my shape of my lips to say words right. And then I started to work, actually before, excuse me, um, when I started to work in San Francisco, seven years, I had not yet been saved. And I applied to different jobs. And uh, so now I applied. Someone invited me for a new job. I started working and I was training and learning. <coughs> And there was not many job openings, so that was my first job there. And then I had a second job in Lawrence Livermore National Labs over here in Livermore. And so I've been 33 years there. I just recently retired this year. And um, I'm happy for that. It was good work there. It was a challenge to learn from that uh, working in the National Lab System. I started working in Lawrence Livermore Labs there. Um, there was a deaf class. And there was a woman who led the deaf class who was teaching workers sign language. And she met me as a worker there. And um, 
I was surprised. I got introduced to this class who were learning sign language at my work, and I go, wow, this is all going over my head. Learn A, B, C, D. Yeah, you know, your numbers next and your basic words. And I got going a little bit. I was not skilled, no way, not deep. But uh, I was good enough. Many people could understand what I was saying, and I was all right. I got saved by Jesus Christ, he, 1982. That's when I got saved. My mother went to church, and she would bring me, my, me and my brother to go to church when I was younger in uh, another state. But I didn't know why I was going to Sunday school class. What was that for? And I resisted that. I didn't want to. I'd rather stay home Monday through Friday school, so why do, can't they just play all weekend? I didn't want to go to church. Later, I can remember in my Bible, my aunt uh, encouraged me to go to church again. My mother encouraged me to go to church. But uh, which church? Lutheran church, Catholic church, Mormon church? There's so many different churches, I have no idea. And so the Lord said, stay, wait, 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 wait. So I'm staying, clueless, reading the Bible, not understanding what I'm reading. Uh, later, a friend of mine, uh, how do we meet? Let's see here. Oh, Lois. Yeah, that's right. We had a Christmas dinner together. So anyhow, Lois, this woman who was leading the class, remember, at my workplace, uh, she showed up at this, and she says, why don't you come for Christmas dinner? And so we sat there, and I thought she was hearing because I found out later that she's hard of hearing, and she could speak, uh, speak anyways. So we became friends. We contacted both hard of hearing people. She invited me to come for a church movie night after that Christmas dinner. It was called The Image of the Beast. And that movie was about the rapture. Yes, and so that movie I watched, and oh my goodness, it touched my heart. He's crying. Um, and I watched that, and, and I saw, Lois saw me and said, what's wrong after the movie? And explained to me about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he saved me, and I can remember reading in the Bible at my mother's church before the same thing about Jesus and, and how I've been explained this and the cross was applied and I praise the Lord now uh, my name is written in the book of life there and so amen that's all I can't say anymore I'm just so happy amen someone taught me some sign language go to school recently uh, these visitors that were here from Livermore, I'm so surprised. I told them, look, I'm willing, you know, I'm happy to help you tr practice more sign language if you need. And uh, I've been going to Tracy, California for a sign language class on Thursday nights, helping Samantha Heinrich. And uh, so they're starting the process. Very good. Thank you so much. Do you like to? And you're going to sign yourself? Or? Some of it. Okay. So J.E. here, okay? So say hello. He is new in process, wants to be baptized soon, so we're going to be starting class with him. And then before I arrive at the front row here, the last row, I do have a special person that is going to be flying on Tuesday? Tuesday night. So this is kind of the last opportunity for you to give her a big hug and say thank you so much for sacrificing your life for these triplet girls, okay? So come here and sh short uh, your testimony. And you just tell me when you okay.
So we'll translate. That's not quite the way you did a good job. Very good job. Pray for us. 
we are going to have that relationship and that fruit together. Maybe you can stay with the deaf church, okay? You learn sign language better, it's better. You can relate with us as a family, as the ego says. No move. No. You can have a relationship with your family, continue, but don't forget. You can come back here. Okay, very good. Yeah, have a seat. Thank you so much. Okay, Dennis, did you want to share anything? Okay.
Francis, I want to challenge you, okay? You want to run Bible study for me, okay? Give me the address where St. Louis I will show up for. We can meet in one hour, two hours, three weeks, something, okay? She and I are now on the video call and we can chat also, right? Now, recently. Right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're connected again. Praise the Lord. Katie, do you want to. I know we're saying that. Just read this stuff. Katie, you want to show your art or talk short? My name, James Davis, yes, and I'm here. I go to study art, and they teach me that as I was growing up. I knew some art things, yes, and uh, college, and uh, many children have programs that they come together for art. And the English I can't really understand, but drawing I really do understand so much about the people. And so that's where I relate and how I get along. Um, and then uh, I was an alcoholic, and so I had to join the program because of anger and alcoholism. Uh, then that, the court let me off, and uh, so now I'm in a second level program uh, where I go. Um, to work training, and so I travel different places to these programs and they train me on the job. Um, and they also help me with expressing things properly. Uh, they observe me and say, This is good, no drunkenness. No, no, we're watching you. And uh, then I come back and forth. It's, it's tough. I have to be patient. And I need to be paying attention in class. And I go through the process to join. Um, Ken has joined with me. And uh, kind of like as a roommate, and uh, with an emergency, there was an emergency there in the hospital, and so I went along, uh, arrived, joined uh, here to the church. Yes, that's right. And so we've been coming now. It's good. I'm, I'm catching some of the things that God is. is I watch pastor. And I say, okay, I catch some of this, and there's some things I miss. I have to read, and I have to match it together. It's tough for me to read. And so I watch how he's signing and said, that's good, I get the story. And then I memorize that because it's just hard for me to read uh, the English there. And the art and the books, I look at that and say, oh yes, um, I need to, to make sure that it's the same as what the Bible has there. You need an interpreter, someone to help me with that. Um, yeah. I can't understand Spanish either, sorry. They, you know, I understand that you need an interpreter for that too. And, uh, we got to get uh, someone to come and help with interpretation. That's a different language, right? Huh. Okay, thank you so much. for sharing. Are you saved? Do you know this? Yes, I'm saved. Do you understand? Yeah, I do.
Yeah, it's good. Those two are concerned. We want to make sure you know. But you as a church family pray because his desire is to walk right, to set aside the old drunk one, set aside never again. His desire is right, and we now need to see that God gives him the power through the Holy Spirit, through salvation, freedom in Christ. Okay? So continue to learn, pay attention, catch what you can, and we're going to continue to encourage you. Okay? We love you. Amir, did you want to speak short? No? Sure. Last chance. Okay. 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 We're, we're going to close. We're going to close in prayer. We're going to close in prayer. Time has run out. And you have an opportunity after church fellowship some more. Make sure you give a big hug for Beth there. As we say, God leads us. And secondly, make sure you get to meet our couple here. Our father and daughter will be flying tonight. Okay? I, I misunderstood. I saw the calendar. I saw June 2nd. I thought, tomorrow? They said, no. Tomorrow is like midnight. Okay? So, uh, Richard, you all right? Are you all right? Okay. If, if, it, if it changes, just inform me. I can, I can take off. Okay. Thanks. Okay. 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 So after Alameda, we'll be back together again. Okay. Yes. God bless you. Oh, and, and our, our grandmother at Alba here wants to give God's things to you as well. Okay. Did your prayers for Shiamara's husband, whose name is Ricardo. Many, many things I know you want to share. After church is finished, don't be afraid. Write, write. Put it down, put it down, the prayer things, and we're going to add. Time 4 o'clock, we'll be gathered together to pray. And also, just if you're curious what we've been lecturing about, time 4 o'clock, we're talking about the kings and the queens of the Old Testament. Many bad characters listed there. And so Francis is right. God has... Mercy, long time on people. And God is saying, come on, come on, come on, repent. God wants us to... That's right. God um, shows the picture. He will not pick out a person who's a family member. And also God shows that he is drawing all men, all women, drawing, drawing, trying to convince people. Okay? So this is good. Let's close with prayer. Yeah. People are rebellious. People resist. And that's right. Well, let's close with prayer. Our Lord and Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to gather together. A little bit of a special service now today with our, our visitors and sharing testimonies here. Uh, in the body of Christ. Thank you so much for the boldness of the people who stood here and they know and they trust you. Some people not yet ready to stand and share the testimony we pray that you continue to work on their hearts to understand clearly the gospel of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Understand it applies for me to know for sure that they can go to heaven with Jesus Christ in the future. Not to doubt and be fearful about the future. We pray also that you will bless the lunchtime. We People that stay in fellowship, help them. But also people who need to leave and come back later, that's fine. Help them. We pray, especially for the time 4 o'clock, our service there, that we be blessed on that. In Jesus' name. Amen.